Audi TT Quattro Mark 1, Haldex oil and filter change. Hi all, Andy here and uh, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be undertaking for the very first time a Haldex oil and filter change. I will highlight all the timestamps in the video here so you can fast forward to the relevant section. So the research I've done includes forums, books, videos, and also speaking to a friend of mine who owns an identical car who's also undertaken this job. They all say it's quite tricky. Getting the oil in and the drain plug back in quick enough afterwards without the oil coming out seems to be the biggest challenge, along with the hard to get to Haldex oil filter. Getting access to the oil and the filter, well, they're at the rear of the car underneath. So my understanding is the Haldex mechanism is the part that controls the, the four wheel drive on the Quattro. So if you own a two wheel drive Audi TT, you're probably not gonna have this problem. So a quick rundown of the tools and parts needed. Firstly, a H5 hex key to remove the drain plug and torque wrench for applying the correct force when tightening. The Haldex oil and the Haldex oil filter. They come as a kit and they come with some handy latex gloves. They're rather pricey even on eBay, and they come in at about £55. To remove the filter, you will also need this rather odd-shaped Haldex filter removal tool to get access and undo the filter and tighten it back up again. Again, on eBay, it's around £15. Lastly, the caulking gun. And you need this for pumping the new oil back into the Haldex unit through the drain plug. A big thanks to Andy at Volkswizard for pointing out in his video, the fit of the nozzle of the Haldex oil is vitally important and needs to make a good seal to minimize leakage. Again, check out Andy's channel and I'll leave a link for him in the description. Worth pointing out, it is also recommended to replace the drain plug and washer when you remove it. They are around five pounds and only available from a main dealer. VW is your best bet and the part number is 02D 525729. Before you start, take the car out for a quick spin to get the Haldex oil up to temperature. It should be between 20 degrees and 40 degrees centigrade. So let's get her up on axle stand and take a look. I do cover in a separate video how to and where to jack up your Audi TT and place it on axle stands. And I'm going to leave a link to that here. Looking under the vehicle, I've got about 18 inches of clearance to work on. That's not enough for me to be able to get the sealant gun vertical. So how am I gonna get the oil from the sealant gun into the Haldex system? Let's get under the car, remove the drain plug, drain the oil out, and then we can look at removing the filter. Looking from the rear right wheel across to the rear left wheel, the location of the Haldex coupling is just here in front of the chassis mounting strut. Here's a better view from just right of the chassis mounting strut. You can clearly see the drain plug here. So from directly under the Haldex coupling, here I am pointing out the location of the drain plug. With your H5 hex key, gently unscrew the drain plug. So as I'm unscrewing the Haldex oil drain plug bolt, you'll notice I'm keeping constant pressure on it. I've removed the ratchet so that I can get better purchase, and now I'm literally gonna remove the drain plug and let it drip into the bowl. Again, it's worth pointing out that the recommended service life for this is 20,000 miles for oil and the filter 40,000 miles. Okay, so all the oil has now stopped dripping, so time to remove the bucket and get a closer look at the drain plug. When it comes to reloading the oil, you're going to need to get the filler tube out of this hole rather quick and this straight back in. So it's good just to practice being able to find that thread. For removing the Haldex oil filter, it makes sense to know what it looks like and where it is located. Looking from underneath, it is located to the rear of the Haldex coupling on the right hand side of the car. Peering through above the chassis mount, we can see it here. It is the black round item with the multi-angled edge that matches the removal spanner. Here is a Haldex unit out of the car and the location of the filter. This diagram, I hope, explains where it is located and how you approach it with the spanner. However, 
To get the rotation of the spanner required, you are going to need to remove the right hand underbody panel. This is made of plastic and is held in place by circular clips. So with these attachments, they seem to have uh, almost rusted off and perished. So this one is completely gone. This one's on there, so I need to somehow pry that off with a screwdriver. There we go. Like I say, there's not an awful lot of room to work under here, but I have got the Haldex oil filter spanner in position. It's locked around the oil filter, and the way to remove it, you need to take the handle and simply turn it. You've literally got about an eighth, sixth or an eighth of a turn. You need to take the spanner off, reposition it and keep doing it. After you've done it a couple of turns, you can reach up here on this side. You can't see this, but I will move the camera in a sec to show you and show you where the filter is. And you can undo it by hand once it's loose. Although you undo the filter with the spanner from this side of the coupling, it's easier to remove the filter from this side. The filter itself has come out of here. You can see the socket through there it's come from. So I've essentially removed the filter there. So with the filter out, the oil is drained. I'll give this a clean up and then we can move on to putting the new filter in. Before fitting the new filter, I'm just having a side-by-side -side comparison. I've checked the serial numbers on both, old one, greasy one at the side on the left, new one on the right. So the CFW V5-22457 and then 28 on the bottom. It's the same on both. I have checked this. Visually they look the same. The fit should be the same, so let's get it on the vehicle. So here's the new filter, so I'm going to apply a little bit of oil around the rubber gasket seal and then I'm going to screw it into the socket and hopefully make a good seal. Oiled up, ready to go. So I'm just feeding that into the socket, I find that thread latches in, screws in nice and easy, finger tight now. Time to fill the Haldex unit back up with oil. So I've invented this. So here you have the corking gun and the Haldex oil with a flexible tube that goes to this semi-flexible mount on the end. And the idea being I'm going to insert this into the drain plug hole, pump the corking gun, and this is made of a flexible enough material that you can bend and flex so it should make a nice seal it will allow me to pump the gun from a horizontal position. Worth pointing out, you're gonna need all your tools to hand. So you need the Haldex drain plug, you need the hex key for putting it back in. I've assembled it all into one unit so I can literally just swap these two over and start screwing it back in. I've got an ice cream tub to catch any oil that may escape. Um, I've also purchased a, a large syringe, so any oil that comes out, I'll catch in the, in the ice cream tub if that happens, and then I can literally suck it up and squirt it back in through the inspection hole. Fingers crossed we should be okay. If this goes horribly wrong, I've ordered a new drain plug and washer for arrival at the end of next week, so fingers crossed it all stays in. Um, and if that happens, I will order another tube of oil. I, I have since found this for 16 pounds on Amazon, so um, it's not the end of the world if this fails, but fingers crossed, this invention is going to work. So let's get under the car and take a look. Okay, so here goes nothing. 
plug ready to go back in, ice cream tub, oil and caulking gun. Here we go, old tight riders. Okay, that's all gone in and I've had absolutely zero leakage out of the hole, so I'm really pleased with that. I'm gonna take that away so you can see. I'm now gonna do the difficult bit. Here, here we go. Well, I lost a bit during that, but not too much, so please that. So I'm just gonna give that a little tighten up with the, the wrench. Seems to be okay though. So to see how that's held, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna give it a wipe up. Leave it for an hour, see if anything comes out. I'm also gonna give it a, a final torque with the torque wrench to make sure it's in sealed and tight. It's gonna give this floor a real good clean to make sure we can identify if there's any leaks for the next hour. So the good news is, looks like the drain plug's holding, there's no leak, there's nothing on the floor. So I think we can safely say, jobs are good in, it's all done, all that's left for me to do now is to apply the clips to put the plastic panel back in place, get the car back down and we're all done. So these are the, the plastic body trim clips I've bought, 10 in a packet, I think they're about six pounds, so 60p each. So I need two to, as you can see, put this back up. Should be quite an easy fix. Push these clips into position. I'm gonna use a, a socket on the end of my torque wrench. So I'm gonna get these clips, place them over the torque wrench, and then literally push this up into position. That seems to hold. So again, so thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this useful, and I hope you will find this tutorial helpful. Thanks again for watching. See you soon.